Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talk Talks. I am joined by, yet again, Mr. Jim Davis of WebDM. Uh, we are talking about class concepts today, aren't we, Jim? Yes, and I, I, we are, I feel like uh, you know, we're swimming in murky waters. But I'm excited. Let's <laughs> yes, do it. Yes, yes. More character concepts, not class concepts. You know, sure. We've we got plenty of classes to choose from and subclasses. Oh, so Yes. Um, so yeah, this episode, we're going to like kind of dive into character concepts that we've come up with that we've been inspired by other classes and also by the community who reached out on Twitter and other platforms to like, kind of like, Hey, can you build this? Will mm -hmm. this be interesting? So is there one that you want to start with Jim? Oh, I got a, I have a whole list of them. The one that I really <laughs> wanted to like, there's two, I really want to get to, um, and I'll, I'll get to them in the order that I saw them. Uh, Cause that's only fair. Uh, and the first one is Merchant Adventurer. Yeah, there's yeah. It, there's so many good spells for that. Uh, I saw that as well. And um, you 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 go ahead, take charge. But I already know this is going to be a lot of acquisitions incorporated involved. Sure, yeah, uh, chicanery with the new spells. <laughs> so I I wish I was as familiar with the Ak Inc book uh, as uh, as I want to be, uh, but that's my fault. Uh, but I would definitely like look to those spells. I know there's a bunch of like first and second level uh, gym dark magic shenanigan type spells where you can yeah. mess with money, the value of money, that kind of thing. My thing for this is like, I I really want to go uh, uh, Genasi. I really want to have like the. I'm I'm not gonna say Genasi by the way. I'm sticking with the G. <laughs> Get the Ganache. Yeah, <laughs> Ganache. Yeah. <laughs> parallel middle plane of chocolate yeah um, so there's <laughs> candy land universe um i probably like fire or i could see fire or air okay uh, being uh of the wandering sort that uh that would be a, like a someone to take off for parts unknown to see who's there and uh you know what opportunities for mutually beneficial exchange are there this is a this is a, a merchant adventurer that doesn't represent like a big they're not like from the whatever the, the East India Company, whatever you know that you've got. They're a lone person looking to find something unique and new. So I'm probably I really want to go Mastermind Rogue for that uh, ability to kind of see their like gain a measure of someone. Right? They've got that battle master um, sort of type ability. Where you sort of like tell something about someone, unless I'm mistaking them for inquisitive, in which case I meant inquisitive, not mastermind. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm checking real quick. Uh, I like that, and then getting the magic, getting them a little bit so they have like first or second level spells. Whether that means a multi-class into bard, or uh, just I don't know. Uh, uh, oh yeah, here it is insightful manipulator ninth level for uh, the mastermind. Um, I don't know. I wish this is where I wish that you could have like two subclasses from the same class because I would take Mastermind and Arcane Trickster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I That's know. Where start, right? That's where I'm starting with this. I don't, I don't even know how you would do that in D&D &D, actually. Um, yeah. 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 So I mean, this is assuming that for this game, there is a robust and fun trade uh, sub game to play. You right. know what I mean? Like we would hack something together or, or make something up, you know. Um, I, I yeah. feel like if a character is going, I mean, if a player is going to make that much of an effort with a character concept, I am going to bring the story to them. Right? For real though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I really used to be of the, why are you trying to pull this stuff on me? But then I'm like, wait a minute, I, you could flip that around and go, oh, I, you made a merchant? Now we can certainly work that into the game. Weird you know. player choices are yeah, yeah. great. I love them. Like yeah. make make a concept, and I will I will adjust my storyline accordingly. Sure, um, sure. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Yeah, unless it's an era cocra. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> oh, you wounds me. I, I mean, all right, I'll play death from above somewhere else then. Death. <laughs> uh, so is that the is that the, uh, the the full length of your your character? Um, that, that's where I'm starting. I, I there's probably a multi class somewhere in there. I can see a uh, warlock. You know, uh, if if you want to get like sinister with it, maybe Mammon or or one of the other uh, 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 devils that that would you know I don't know 
if you, I mean, if, if it like took a path for down the dark side or something. I mean, it really helps right you with Yelp for reviews, right? If you can uh, yeah. spam disguise self, right? Exactly. You just move from store to store. So you're <laughs> actually the only game in town and they don't know it. You're just uh -huh. like running from lockdown. shop to shop. Yeah. You yeah. write the rules. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally do that. I would. Add, I mean, it's kind of like having a Starbucks across from a Starbucks. So you just. <laughs> <laughs> there is no competition. You own all these stores. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and you're just rushing from one to one. And you're like, oh, I'll give you a better deal than the other guy. He's such a jerk. Um, <laughs> this guy over here. I, always I bet you like hate to have him a character now, with you? a side scam. Right. I bet you hate that guy now. <laughs> Uh, so I can yeah. go with something that's a little weird and it's, yeah, uh, heavily in, in, um, uh, involving, uh, unearth arcana. So well, not heavily. Uh, so I, I thought about what would be fun is what if there's a character with a really dark past, which, you know, shocker, but I want to make a pacifist. Can I make a pacifist that works in D and D mm -hmm. and yes, you can. <laughs> Quite, a, quite effectively, as it turns out. So um, right, I was pacifist. going for my build. I basically did like um, a seventh level paladin oath of redemption, and they will not fight or kill unless it is amazingly important to do so. Like mm -hmm. they will do everything not to join the fight, but they have that reflective ability where if an enemy attacks one of their friends they can reflect the, the damage back on the enemy in radiant form if they mm -hmm. fail a saving throw and that can be a tremendous amount of damage sure so you're not directly involved in the fight but you're punishing the enemy for hurting someone that you care about in that fight um yeah, they okay. are they are also like a shield master and they're they're also like very focused on the shield so they can use a reaction also to block mm -hmm. damage from mm -hmm. anyone that's within five feet of them. Mm -hmm. They have the sentinel feet, so they can make it so they're they're they are tanking by being in the fray, sure. but they can be stopping things from even moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um so it's a lot of pass uh, reaction stuff. And then at seventh level, you also get the ability to um take the damage onto yourself. So you can literally be a damage sponge uh, for uh, people who are around you. You can absorb all that damage. And, Do they get and, warding bond? It's not warding bond. It's uh, the Paladin Oath of Redemption gets something, I believe, at seventh level where they can take the damage onto themselves. Um, weirdly, they don't get warding bond. The only Paladin who does, I believe, is the Oath of the Crown. Am I wrong? Or... I think, yeah, Oath of the Crown gets it. Yeah, Yeah. so Oath of the Crown gets it, and the Oath of Redemption Paladin doesn't, which is a little strange, but the Oath of Redemption Paladin does have a lot of those spells. Sure. Um, I was temp tempted to like do delve into maybe Divine Soul Sorcerer to get it, because Warding Bond is so cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and That would be uh, very, uh, very appropriate sort of for like I yeah mean, if, there, if there's like an angelic spirit that's come and and dwelt within this uh this person that's that's seeking redemption you know right right yeah, yeah. I, I there there there's and then you get that that extra boost of like you're yeah. definitely a healer right you've got your lay on hands and you've got the divine soul sorcerer stuff um and and you have i think empowered healing as well um mm -hmm. so yeah there's a lot of benefits to that i also however i thought about taking a dip into rune knight in unearthed arcana which gave me the cloud rune which allows mm -hmm. me to cause an attack that is against myself or someone else gets directed towards someone of my cho choosing Ooh. so that's another way i can actually cause an enemy's attack to hit somebody else you've really thought this through Yes, I have. I do. This is really <laughs> <laughs> so. So basically, what you're looking at is if someone's within five feet of you, you can have the option to use your reaction to shield them with your actual shield. Mm -hmm. If someone tries to pass you, you can uh, an enemy. You can sentinel attack them as a reaction and hit. You know, cause them to be uh, only moving zero. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got the ability to reflect damage back on the enemy if they hurt one of your friends. And on top of that, as a reaction, you can also decide to uh, have ha take all the damage unto yourself. Mm -hmm. um, for how long combat often runs, that's a lot of the same theme to work sure. with. 
And even when you run out of all of those special abilities, you still got the feats and, mm -hmm. and, and the actual fighting if you need to. And I feel like if you've, if you are the Oath of Redemption Paladin mm -hmm. and you have used all of those abilities and the fight is still going on, it absolutely makes sense for you to start fighting. Sure, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's, you yeah, did. Dire straits. You, you warned them. Yeah. <laughs> you reflected damage. And that's that could be a, a boss killer. Sure. Like, if someone like throws down, you know, like disintegrate and you reflect that damage back at the lich who shot it, like mm -hmm. that is both of Redemption Paladin is a glass cannon killer. Certainly. Um, for those, yeah, for the something like a lich or uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other really nasty glass cannons, but yeah, you know, I, lich really is the one that comes to my poor lich. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I feel like it's a really good um role play experience. Like it was very enchanted with the idea of like a pacifist in D D. Like I, I wouldn't normally play that character, but man, that yeah. character's got a story, and to be holding back all the time is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and it makes them kind of scarier, right? Like, like whoa, it's why would like a force multiplier in yeah, you know, in, 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 in like that classic sense of like the bard as a fifth character is like it just makes the party stronger, makes them more uh, focused yeah uh, so you can see how that goes i i was i missed it how like what's the action economy on that like like is there any anything competing for like your bonus action or it seems like you at least um, have two reactions it's a lot of reactions a lot of reactions yeah still yeah, yeah. it's uh like the shield the shield uh if you take that that shield um fighting mm -hmm. uh focus protection um that's a reaction and then you've got your natural oath of uh redemption paladin i should probably bring it up i'm doing this mo mostly from memory um do not be concerned i am this obsessed with dnd that no, i hate no, to do no, that right. don't worry about it uh, Listen, you're among friends tom <laughs> <laughs> this is literally how i go to sleep at night like yeah. i i think about i think about uh character concepts better um, that than the abyss <laughs> it's better than that yes uh, certainly true. Um, yeah, so you are looking at you're using your reactions a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I think the the rest of your actions you're, you're probably doing healing um, and other abjuration spells. Um, yeah. It is uh, that's why I'm I think I'm kind of stuck on doing Rune Knight really because that is a lot of like okay you're always causing someone else's attack the enemy's attack to fail. Mm -hmm. um the only thing that you run into an issue with is if they don't succeed the, the enemy never succeeds sure um but you know uh let's see what else can we do in there like wording flare do paladins get that i don't think they do I'm not sure that's a, that's the uh that was a ranger spell it's one of those that i think i read once and then i've never yeah seen in play um so we cleric who like shoots that off a lot so uh, that would be Lauren Urban. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, all right. So pal yeah, pacifist characters have always had that reputation in D&D of like, there's someone who wants to play a pacifist character, but like it, it usually just ends up, well, you're just sort of, you don't do anything. And also right. like there's you, your liability because you're going to get killed. And it's finally like, I really like the idea of, of all of them. Paladin is the one where it's like, yeah, I can... I'm not here to do violence. I'm here to prevent it. But if you're escalating it, I'm yeah. going to make things worse for you. I still have Smite at the end of the day. And that's <laughs> at the end of the day. Right. And if I need to. Uh, and so, like, it, it it at least, like, eases that tension of the pacifist character where it's like, all right, if even if we have to throw down, I'm a, I can help out. I can contribute. And then that means, like, when the role play tension of, like, do we kill them? Do we not? How do we treat the enemy? are you know are they people are they not whatever some groups love those conversations mm -hmm. um and uh it means that <laughs> you don't have to deal with like oh yeah and you also don't help with the fight you know yeah uh, <laughs> from just like a player perspective it's nice <laughs> yeah it is a lot like you've got rebuke the violent that's what it's called the channel yeah. divinity is like immediately uh after an attacker within 30 feet deals damage to a attack against a creature other than you you can cause the, your reaction to cause that damage to reflect back them on them on in radiant damage and if they fail their wisdom saving throw it's only i mean if they succeed it's only ha it's half that damage but they're still taking the damage right um protection again is a reaction within five feet with your shield 
And the sky rune is another reaction that you can do within 30 feet, causing that attack to hit somebody else. You're really taking off the DM problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like in a charming way, because the DM's going to know that's what you're about. Sure. Sure um, enough. And that's a lot of life saving stuff right there. That's that's three three abilities that are doing a lot of great. Plus, they also have a redemption paladin and can also to use their divine. Um, their uh divinity to get a bonus to persuasion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and diplomacy this is a very diplomatic paladin as well who will sure. try to talk their way out of things de-escalate i think having a good per high perception for this character is also really important because mm -hmm. then you know if someone's just going to be evil for evil's sake and you, you just gotta kill them an insight would be good as well uh yeah uh i i there's a part of me that like if you wanted one more use for your reaction I could dip six into wizard for abjurations, protected ward, and throw up the uh, arcane ward on your reaction. I did think yeah. about that, but that that arcane ward is never going to get very high because it's, you're, it's a it's based off your wizard level. Certainly, yeah, that's um, true. yeah. I and I I try to look at drunken master and stuff like that. Like, uh, oh, yeah, it, yeah. then you're really in the weeds in terms of. Uh, any you know, feats? Any feats that this guy, inspiring leader, you know, for uh, the buff? That, that would have been good. I think that would have been good. Sentinel, I did. Sentinel, uh, that's right. See, I, like Sentinel, I felt like was important, but like just stopping, like, hey, 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 you're not yeah. gonna go anywhere. I've I've stabbed you with my spear. Let's <laughs> talk about this. <laughs> you know, nice. I can I kind of envision that, like just uh, just knocking things on their butt and saying, okay, we don't have to escalate we this. Don't want to have to escalate, it. and you know, I always have a quarter staff and trip and. Yeah, you know, it, this is one of those things where if I like, if if there is a player at this table, like, yeah, you can try to disarm the guy, or you can try to, you know, there's a reason those options exist in the DMG for like combat options for odd cases of trying mm -hmm. to wrestle a monster to the ground or disarm a death knight or something. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> disarm a death knight, like literally Listen, that's disarm. Some it. That's some paladin action right there, though. You know. Yeah, I'm telling you. I disarm. Yeah. <laughs> If anyone gets that action, um, uh, yeah, I wonder if I missed something with the the drunken master monk. Um, I don't yeah. think I did. I, uh, I they I, do I, have one ability where you can cause them somebody to hit somebody else as well, but man, then you're really in it um, oh, in yes. terms of like yeah, now not really wearing armor. Of, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you're skirting the line of the non-aggression principle. Yeah. <laughs> tipsy sway okay. uh, oh redirect attack that's at six level yeah that's too far that's too far for this like you yeah you're like level 20 at this point for messing around at this point yeah 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 so uh what's your next concept so i think my next concept is uh well i have two and these are from uh these are from our communications director at webm and my lovely spouse emma all of the characters in the movie Willow, which is my favorite fantasy movie. <laughs> um, and I can just rattle those off real quick. Uh, Mad Morgan, of course, Battlemasters, the greatest swordsman alive. Uh, Willow's transmuter, because he's constantly turning things into constantly. other things. Constantly. Right? All basketball components. Right. And the two brownies uh, uh, are clearly uh, uh, rangers, but the, you know they, they forgot to put uh, proficiency in survival. Uh, they thought they got it for you know forgot it for free uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh finn Rizel is uh you know wizard probably uh i'm gonna go with abjurer just because uh she's very tough very yeah. uh, uh you know tenacious um and uh, does she get a little bit of monk because she's a good puncher she's that. a good puncher as well she's at least got tavern brawler which I yeah uh, <laughs> oh man that's a great thing to, to throw in there my wizard is tavern brawler yeah, I took tough and tavern brawler for my wizard I, all it's right, so I'll random um yeah and then uh Sorsha is uh okay so Sorsha is like purple dragon knight or, or something like that a commander type mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to like uh, an individual but she's gonna she's still a fighter and then General Kale is yeah a reskinned death knight or something you know something like that i'm not gonna stat him up as a character he's just gonna get a sword run through in the mud yeah mm. it's a great movie you guys see it if you haven't yeah beware of trolls beware Be of trolls um <laughs> and so bard i for me bard is like i want the classic like you guys seen witcher i want to play yasker dandelion like i want the guy who's just foppish and it like understands that they live in kind of a fantasy place, a fantastic place. And like, yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's, um, he, 
it's two situations like he is very much the audience in the witcher oh, yeah. like he's the only one who's kind of seeing everything through a semi-rational lens mm-hmm. um he is now amongst my two fair bards my other favorite is chaucer from a knight's tale which we oh, were sure. talking about uh chaucer i think is the mm-hmm. uh, the bard i would play the talkative bard but not not someone who's singing but you know through oratory is yeah. convincing people of things yeah. Um, and more of a charlatan and, and that kind of bard appeals to me very much so um yeah. orator and, uh, is is one that could get some love orator i guess i don't know is there a ua i feel like there's a ua on that and now i'm just blanking i think there was i think yeah. there was actually yeah. um no, and uh enough. it may not have seen the light of day i'm not quite sure but like i, I kind of feel like any bard could be that true um what about kvoth what kvoth from name of the wind and, oh, uh, I, uh, yeah. No, I was uh, I was just looking at movies in my mind. Um, <laughs> you were thinking your your mind was elsewhere. Honestly, I Deadpool think... Deadpool's kind of a bard, of, of College of Swords bard. So, um, yeah, and half of everything he's doing is talk, you know, cutting just, words, right? Vicious sure. mockery and yeah, yeah, yeah. distracting so. people so they hurt themselves. Yeah, I I can do that. I I like just the here's what I like. I first encountered the concept of a bard at this like second edition, right? Baldur's Gate, high, high forgotten realms, D and D, you know, high Ren fest D and D for me. And it's like the idea of someone who knows a little bit of everything because they travel, they wander around, mm-hmm. they, they are trying to uh, capture some of the glory of this place that, that seen so many great empires and kingdoms rise and fall. And these, tragedies and drama that are played out in scars across the landscape and the history of people from little village to little village mm-hmm. like the, the kind of campaign i want to play a bard in lasts years it, in, it it would reward me with like a deep investment in lore and npcs and like oh yeah we've come around to this tavern again like we did last year you know like that's the kind of game i want to play a bard in so that like I have the time to make up little folk songs for the places we go through and to see your influence and reputation spread. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not in it for like action hero, go a mile a minute style D and D that's my fighter. (laughs) You know, I play barbarians Mm -hmm. for that kind of thing. (laughs) I'm in this for the slow burn. Uh, And so that's the kind of, I want a bard that fits that campaign. It's kind of hard to, nailed down other than like probably lore because of the extra magic you know? mm-hmm. they're like the most to me they're the most like classic um sort of paint your own picture of a class uh bard so yeah that's very good um yeah, got yeah. a few questions in chat someone was asking what that's race would i have the uh pacifist paladin be and no. i uh, just human i think um you know, uh, if you're doing the divine soul, maybe you can be Asmar, but like, I, I just like someone, and I think in you know, dark past, whatever, but I think it's an, a different take on it. Um, I think you'd also make that super pacifist paladin be evil. Like their oath is more important to them than their alignment. That is appealing to me. So they are actually holding back because they know they are a bad person. Yeah. Um, deep down, like once they get into the fight, it's going to be bad. Uh, and, and and certainly, I think we see that um, examples of that um, in in several different types of fiction, where where someone's doing evil for the sake of good, but really they just enjoy doing evil. They've got an excuse. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that character is interesting. Uh, would you guys play an artificer or artillerist that uses only bioorganic materials? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're like, you become Gallagher. Yeah. I'm, if you want a really old reference. Um, so like I, I, I've got a, a Simic hybrid uh, moon druid that is to me is like a Vivamancer, a oh, Biomancer. Man. Yeah. You know, and all of the spells are just reskinned, like grotesque. I'm, you know, oh, I'm going to inject myself with the, the thing real yeah. quick. It's going to be okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes, I would totally reskin a, 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 an artificer to be a Biomage kind of thing um any homebrew races that have ever gotten your attention i have made my own homebrew races so nothing has really popped out of me i i made a i redid a shade um mm-hmm. which i think uh, ended up in fourth edition i think a lot like i think everything ended up in fourth edition um so i made a shade for myself based off um some of the fourth edition rules 
um, and I may, may, may myself wear a bat, but actually on closer examination of wear bats, uh, there's not a lot of advantage to being a wear bat. Um, you get that minus two, you get that disadvantage to like attack rolls and sunlight, mm. right? Um, yeah, light sensitivity is a tough one. Yeah, and there's no longer that like only plus one weapons will hurt you, right? Like that that's gone. Um, so really, the only thing you're getting in exchange is a, a higher dexterity score, um, and uh, which I wouldn't really manipulate that. Um, and then you can turn into a bat, which is very very powerful. Being able to turn sure. to a little bat or a big bat is still like I can get out of combat. I can get out of combat. I can sneak into places. Mm -hmm. um, but I still feel like if you're getting disadvantaged to all this other stuff, I think that's pretty balanced, actually. Like, I would let someone play a lycanthrop because yeah. there's so, like there's a wear so bat kind of thing. maybe negative aspects to that. Also, you can't just turn into a bat um, or a bat hybrid and not like have villagers stone you. Yeah, um, yeah, it really is campaign dependent, isn't it? It's like if everybody else has got horns and wings and things, then it's I probably would be less. You know, I'm probably like, okay, yeah, you can turn into a bat. Here's how it goes. Um, yeah but if it's more like a low fantasy type it's like no one else turns into a bat this is weird dude like <laughs> people are gonna look at you straight or you're gonna hide it like this yeah. is something you gotta hide yeah. like if you use this ability you will be marked right. <laughs> like my, my <laughs> thing <laughs> my thing with lycanthropes like okay so isn't the lore that if you can change whenever you want that you've embraced the curse yeah, and absolutely. are evil yes so you you change and have to slake your bloodlust yes for calling upon your dark side otherwise we roll to see what phase of the moon it is at the beginning of a session yep right like that's how i how I, I you have to be committed to playing a neutral evil character uh for a lot of them um yeah except yeah. for the bear which weirdly you could be like you know sure. neutral good so there's actually no really <laughs> minus honey to being a bear bear. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> this is a perfect thing for honey ice right um but yeah like the i would play a neutral evil werebat that's trying to be good and hiding the fact they're a werebat like that's how i mean like if that's what your group's down for yeah then that's then you do you have fun you know sounds like a fun i'm game. just sorry i'm werebat obsessed i've been bothering everyone yeah, in our yeah. company slack about it so <laughs> um <laughs> i am who i am i'm not i'm not pretending <laughs> uh so uh the other concept i came up with uh other than where about um <laughs> is um the the good necromancer i've been working on this for a few years yeah okay let's let's do it yeah all right so, i got where's my book <clears throat> this is a moral this is very a dr frankenstein um type of necromancer they've got a uh, life i believe they get to life transference don't they um, uh, yeah, is a necromancy spell. Mm -hmm. So I believe they get life tra transference and they also have vampiric touch. And this is like a big staple of them. Mm -hmm. They they will, they have no problem draining the life out of those they see evil. Um, they very much cast judgment and then taking the health. They're like the vampiric healer and they take that health and then give it back to one of the players. Yes. So they are like evil for the sake of good. They're almost like the opposite of the pacifist paladin. Um, they will take the enemy's dead bodies and raise them up from to be undead skeletons or zombies to help repair mm -hmm. a town afterwards yeah you yeah. know good uh, things you can do as long as you're minding where this what the skeleton does it's like the mindful necromancer right um yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah i love the like for me i like the idea of a good necromancer be like you know like who who's to say that the church doesn't entomb the bodies of the holy faithful for the glorious battle at the end of time and they're all like whites or mummies right or or divine ghouls or something like that you know right uh, there's nothing that's yeah you're devout uh <laughs> and and you know what do you mean you you died well yeah your soul is enjoying the afterlife and the glorious heavenly mountain but your body is still of much use to us we got temples to guard we've got tombs that we don't want grave robbers coming up in exactly you know i i can see there's a lot of reasons that good or especially like lawful aligned oh uh, man and the arguments undead. yeah and again with the gonna... pacifist paladin people arguing with the pacifist paladin about not getting the fight and the necromancer arguing how is me raising a skeleton from the dead and the unlike you carrying a sword every day sure if you lose your sword someone else will use it to kill if i lose my skeleton 
it yeah, will it, kill it will somebody. Be, it will go like, seek out life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like so. Like, how is that different? Like, yeah. in the necromancer that can get in that those type of those types of arguments is very interesting. And then I would give them medicine as well mm -hmm. um, to be this very gothic character, which I'm I'm so I've been tempted to play this character forever, and is okay. eventually aspiring to lichdom because who doesn't? Who doesn't? There's all kinds of liches. E that's what and I, I i i just i'm very taken with and they don't have to be a good character but they're doing good things and so i i love a character who is like either an assassin or well you know or a necromancer that can like yeah but i really am helping the party this is why for me alignment is not personal morality it's when ragnarok comes do you fight on the side of the asgardians or cthulhu Right, <laughs> are, right. Are you here for yeah. the person, for the entity that's going to destroy this place, or do you stand for existence? Right. And you could be a real some bitch, just a real ass, <laughs> and just and still be like, I do this because uh, ex Cthulhu. And yeah. No one wants. No <laughs> one wants that. No one does. You know, they're crazy. Yeah. They're, they're crazy. You know. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. always. I always like it. And in, in, in any story, this is a very common narrative of like, there's two groups that just don't get along, and eventually they're like, oh yeah, you thought that they were bad. They that was bad. <laughs> Wait till that sky hole rips open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everyone's like, let's let's make the buddy yeah. the buddy episode. Um, yeah. I, I always love that in every like '80s cartoon that eventually happens. Um, <laughs> yes. What, what else do you got? All right, so I have some from uh, some of our uh, patrons had some, and I, I really like them. So uh, we had an, uh, someone was playing a tiefling eldritch knight with the idea of like they are reflavored as like a salamander. And I love that because I feel like I always forget about salamanders and like the fire snake and, and just all the different denizens of the city of brass mm -hmm. as really mapping onto tiefling really well and like fitting that, uh, even if you don't even reskin it still uh, argue for it and i i first off just like it i like eldritch knight for it because of the aggressive like fighter i just don't like armor that's just warm and and like not like damaging but like you could warm a sandwich on this armor you know yeah. it just <laughs> radiates heat yeah that's uh, cool and so i like that and then the challenge was is there a way to make it the uh, eldritch knight and haste work at the same time and like i just my quick perusal of the issue which is basically that by the time you get haste as an eldritch knight you can already make three attacks and it takes yeah. an action and how long does combat last it's hard to see like glyph plus haste so that you spend the action before combat and then you just activate the glyph and go mm -hmm. or haste cast by someone else maybe but i i wouldn't take it for my eldritch knight Not, that's a, you, how many third level spells you get yeah you know no i'd probably take something else you know blink maybe or fireball because you know why not right anyway uh but I, I like that just because i i like the concept of it uh you know i, I like i'd reskin it as like a devil lizard that's just from another plane that's come here to i don't know like to be challenged or something like that you know uh, like characters that are interdimensional and are here because I want to play D and D. That's yeah. why. That's why this character exists. We'll figure out later what the backstory is. Uh, so another concept I've had with uh, my wife, which we shot back and forth, and, and she insists uh, we both play uh, Lurker and the Deep Warlocks, and we are both kind of part of the same. We are the Kraken, yes. <laughs> kind of, in a sense. So we both are summoning that tentacle at third level which you can use to attack as a bonus action it effectively is spiritual weapon for yeah. warlocks um and then at seventh level you can use that ten that tentacle to actually block damage that's being done mm. um i like this so the fact that you're both lurker in the deep warlocks you're both able to like use your reactions to block damage for each other and use a bonus action to attack so you got two tentacles out there it's almost like the kraken's there and you both can do you know, the hungering maw that comes up mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Then you you layer on I um I's uh, devil sight, and then you got that inky blackness. You got that you cast darkness, and you both can see in it. And then you're just like, just one two one two. It would <laughs> like, be great, like especially in like a ghost of salt marsh inspired. Like you're on the water all the time. Yeah, um, yeah, that'd be really fun. I, uh, I really like that. 
the fact that no one can see and that way because normally that kind of build where especially if you both take sentinel or something like that then things get really dodgy <laughs> for the enemy but you know the problem with that whole darkness build with warlax typically is you're by yourself um, right. and you're alienating kind of your party when you do that in all ways like you're, you're definitely soloing at that point you know mm. people can't see what's happening in the darkness um it's super creepy um if you have the sentinel feet that means that if someone tries to run away from you uh, they can't escape. They you knock them down to zero, and they're just in there with the darkness. Yeah. Um, coupled with just the spamming of tentacles, um, it's a, I think it's a good uh, pairing. I think so it's, too. It's one of those warlocks that layers together very well, where it's just very like, man, so. this this couple is scary. Very much so, and it's like a neat sort of. Uh, I don't know. I I would almost go with like a, a one being and two bodies sort of yeah. kind of like weirdness level. Yeah, uh, or two halves of the same soul, and that's mm -hmm. why that like their pact is almost with each other. And then, Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was that was kind of the concept we've we've been like hovering around for like Avon and Sophia. So ultimately, yeah. there like got to take one of those homebrew octafolk, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know the yeah, octafolk. <laughs> uh all right so <laughs> just I, saying that out loud is hilarious <laughs> so i got i have, a, I have one here uh, okay. uh and, and this one just like i'm still trying to wrap my head around it because there is a character concept and it's kinku artificer that is a bounty hunter and there's something about like the kinku's ability to like mimic and like observe and listen here that i could see is like giving them a technical ability or like a you know, maybe this was a, a kinku that worked or or lived somewhere near a, a tinker gnome or or something mm. like that. Uh, um, you know, was orphaned on the Isle of Lantan or you know, wherever uh, in your campaign world, and like is just a good with has a knack for things. You know, shiny objects and getting into places that they're not supposed to and taking little useless value, un, you know, not valuable things and like turning them into little clockwork. Uh, stuff very yeah. much like a raven i mean ravens yeah. are the only other i believe they're the only other creature on the planet other than us that can use tools um and then some i think chimpanzees some can do well, yeah, well, well but the fact that ravens will take a piece of wire and like within seconds of looking at like there's food in a bottle and they'll just like grab a wire twist the wire so there's a hook and then like <sighs> and dip then it in the right. bottle and pull the food out and that happens within like seconds. Have you seen the like, ravens? Have you ever been to Tower of London? I have not been to the Tower of those, London. Those ravens will come up to your knees. They yeah. are gigantic. Anyway, that's just, uh, that terrifies me. So uh, yeah, I can imagine this character is, is having a nefarious reputation because they're always seen in dark places and like mm -hmm. scrounging around and things like that. But then the, the bounty hunter angle comes from like, they are always scrounging around and in dark places so they are sort of like on the fringe of the underworld uh maybe they're um ignored or or just like you know we don't pay attention to that kinku you know just mm -hmm. at least it only knows like five phrases you know <laughs> something like that can't can't have a conversation with him um and so you're like unseen unobserved and then send your your <laughs> minions after them <laughs> i do like maybe the battle what is it battlesmith that's probably what i'd go with yeah you have like a some sort of like a clockwork stray dog <laughs> to, uh, that comes after your uh your prey <laughs> now i haven't i uh i struggled with a build that's uh i wouldn't say it's a failure but i've brought up the B batarian um but I, I i i thought about our previous conversation about how gross um the the beast barbarian is <laughs> in unearth arcana yes. uh the fact that i i'm so taken by the fact that you can get hit points and it's not a lot but you're already a barbarian the fact that you can grow teeth and basically be a lycanthrop and get hit points back when you make one attack you only did this once mm -hmm. per your per per uh action not action but i think uh turn Mm -hmm. um and so if you do the bite action that during that um no matter how many you do uh you can only get hit points back after you damage them uh equaling to your constitution modifier which means you're dumping into your constitution modifier mm -hmm. so you already have a lot of hit points but if you're doing that every turn that's just who you are then you are like a werewolf feasting or like a, a like a bat um 
drinking the blood of your enemies during combat. I think that's super creepy. I think it's yeah. super creepy role play. I like um, that. I think I think you, if I'm a DM, I, I'm, I'm I'm probably handing out some bonuses to intimidation. Um, <laughs> certainly, I, that certainly warrants that kind of thing. Yeah, and it, and it does sort of like. I, I like it. I think maybe I mentioned it on the the, the last time, but I, it's it's uh, reinforced in my mind that uh, darkest dungeons, the abomination class, just like something like this. You they this guy used to be our friend, <laughs> and then something <laughs> happened to them. Yeah, they're like something like I got hit by a chaos bolt or right. You know, <laughs> party now- too many gnomes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got now we now we put up with him right. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I like the idea of of uh, of a monster, and then like a like it's like the Hulk. My Hulk, Hulk was always my favorite of the yeah. Avengers because they're like having to grapple with the monstrous things they do when their emotions get out of control. That's a big mood for me. Not the monstrous part, but just feeling you know like you know, starting to utterly reveal myself to be a terrible person. Well, <laughs> And then if you, you couple this, if you just want to go for horror, and it's not really utility because it doesn't require, but if you take grappler and then you're just like, you grapple the thing and you're feeding off of it basically. And the rest of the time you're like doing regular damage with your, 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 your teeth. So you have multiple yeah. attacks with your teeth and everything. So you're, mm-hmm. you're just destroying them. Like you, yeah. you are like a, the tank that envelops, right? Yes. It's just this one, this one enemy on the battlefield and just, are draining life out of it um yeah. it's an interesting That's ability cool. because i don't know like do you get do you get health back from biting an undead <laughs> like, or a okay. death knight like how do we yeah. how do we work that <laughs> well like this- hmm. if so if they've got bone marrow yeah then, like i sure. don't know that might be like you're just draining the essence and- like yeah like the very <laughs> yeah bestial nature you can just at the, that point i would say is like draining the essence out. sure something. i'd be more worried with like a gibbering mouther yeah. or a, <laughs> yeah, i know right, know, right? <laughs> where, where, where like the math is fine the math is sound <laughs> okay okay so you take this class and you combine it with all of those uh dungeon uh dining uh hacks that you saw about a year or so ago where it's like here's how many calories this the monster Monster manuals work. The oh joy, my God. joy of monster cooking, or yeah. something like that. I, yeah, okay. I'm doing take the gourmand feet. Um, oh man, you are the guy who knows what everyone tastes like. Yeah, I think oh, someone, man, someone that's asked a nice us. Role play. <laughs> someone asked us on on Twitter, like you know, a lizard folk path of the beast plus like another class as multi class. You know, yeah. And I I think that's my choice. It's like the the dispassion of the lizard folk. The like, yeah, I'm I'm just here to eat things. I, I'm, you know, I'm from mm-hmm. the reptiloid subterranean reptiloid empire. Uh, mm-hmm. you don't worry about us yet, but uh, you know, I'm here to eat things. I'm here to sample the, the local fare, and I'm thinking maybe my second class is. Mm-hmm. I want to say ranger. I think ra- like that just for like the idea that you tell you batarian of- get that wild that that swarm keeper. Then you've got the whole yeah. you know. Like, little bats <laughs> but yeah you could sort of like reflavor them like little drakes or something like that to go out yeah. and scout and bring you back little morsels or you you have like spider mandibles when you bite something and then you mm. got spiders that are with you <sighs> yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. like they're they're your young i would definitely do that uh what's the uh, there's like a couple of uh toriko and then what dungeon meiji or two i mean i'm i know one is a manga one's an anime but uh i don't know which one right now i've seen them at both so anyway i don't you know i, I love might eating do, monsters so i, I love might, this idea that idea i actually like better for dragonborn because oh. dragonborn you now have oh. you still can use your breath weapon and saw a spell attack yeah. and you're a barbarian raging yeah um and so then, and okay, the teeth so the and the claws is... make a lot of sense and the tail suddenly makes sense now you're the ultimate dragon barbarian and you've oh, oh. My God. <laughs> oh my god oh my maybe god, Todd. Mm. maybe you, you dip sweets. into source draconic sorcerer to get I a little bit of armor class i would do it there's there's spells you can take that you, you know that work for you're not well that's more warlock no right. yeah you but can, still you find something you, you, you get know. that resistance you get a little bit like you just a little dip into sorcerer so you have it like you tell the outside of being a a, yeah. a barbarian 
Um, yeah. That's a little unusual. She says, you're the most, dra- I think at that point, you're the most dragony, dragon, I dragon this, you can this, be. I, and- oh, I didn't realize. I just, mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm making this character now. It's got you. So the question. All right. So then the question is, what breath weapon? Because that flavors everything. Because you could get really bad. Well, if you want to be like full on aliens, you you go black dragon, and uh, so you're I mean. spewing acid, and so then you have the tail attack. Like if you want that aliens experience. That's because... right. okay. So for one, there's your alien experience, but also like you're eating the what the partially digested meat. Oh. <laughs> And you're the acid, disgusting. you're like the full on spider of the fly. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's so gross. You're slurping at the enemy. Up my, Nick, I'm gonna show up in my next pickup game at the local game store. Don't worry, don't worry about me, guys. Can I use this and UA you're, content? And you're lawful good. <laughs> Listen, you got yeah, I wasn't the one that invoked Deadpool. So <laughs> oh my god, just be lawful good. And you're like, listen, d- different. <laughs> Everyone's different. Yeah. so disgusting uh but fire is i think fire i would go with i'd be hard not to go with fire red dragons yeah you're cooking your food man Uh, if you want like a more savory oh cobalt feet well yeah you get that's so such a weird um i meant gold but you could like cobalt would be like insane like you're you're just be horrified um small barbarians exist that's true yeah i like uh, i like to play a small uh a, a goblin barbarian or a goblin rune knight for the mm-hmm. for the, the giggles yes. um yeah i played i recently pl- uh introduced a character that was a goblin that that became a giant goblin and that's horrifying oh i love big goblin big goblin is scary big goblin is great yeah big oh, goblin this... is very death note looking yeah <laughs> god of death looking <laughs> very much my other favorite monster and i is a uh, giant toddler oh god i have, no. I have put <laughs> I have put giant toddlers in a game before. And they're as I'm putting a frost this, giant toddler into they, something uh, right away. <laughs> and they are, they, you know, it's toddler attitude towards objects and giant size. <laughs> what oh, could go God. wrong? You know. Oh, God, so terrifying. And they don't even know they're evil. Oh, they don't even so know scary. they're evil. Yeah, they don't even know they're evil. What are you going to do? Are you going to harm a kid? Oh, oh. Like, come on, guys. Oh yeah, pull. By the way, just pulled the arm off of <laughs> one of your guy, one of your NPCs. I have a horrific monster that is uh, a moral, uh, a hard moral choice. Um, yeah. uh, I'm not going to even say it here because I'll probably put it on DM scale because mm-hmm. it, it was something I said to uh, uh, my lead writer Joey, and, and he's just like, oh, "No, <laughs> I don't want to fight that. <laughs> no, it's not gross. It's just the moral implications of it are like, no, mm-hmm. I play D and D to us." Ape. Yeah. yeah hard hard moral choices um <laughs> but uh yeah so i think uh and, whoa um mm. apparently the cats are messing with the dog uh there any more uh so, I, i've got i've got a bunch more but yeah, i would yeah, go take, keep, I, yeah, yeah i would take yeah. a few from chat as well if we've got questions from absolutely chat. go for it all right well i'll take my okay so um we talked about path of the beast the let's folk i someone uh, was like just pure old-fashioned mystic theurge the the divine the arcane and i was like man there's so many different ways to do that like my favorite is arcane cleric i really like arcane cleric and then taking say like ritual caster wizard Mm -hmm. is a really like to me that's a solid uh what's the what's the concept again so it's like the divine and arcane caster in third 3.5 they were a prestige class that was like you get both of your cleric and wizard levels uh, spell levels level up but to me they are i think of them more as like a um a spell keeper of a zooth or or cleric of, of uh, a mistra like mm-hmm. they straddle the line between wizard and cleric because they were either wizards that like super into the god or goddess of magic mm-hmm. or clerics have said that you know no wizardry because you know that's just how it is and mm-hmm. I think of them as like, um, like white mages, you know, of, of, they can do a little bit of healing, a little bit of, uh, mm-hmm. majory kind of divine soul sorcerer as well. So there's all, all different ways to try it. Um, but I like our uh, arcane clerics for this. That's, that's sort of my, uh, what I really like. I like, uh, the arcane clerics for like, if you want to play a Jedi and your spiritual weapon is your lightsaber, um, mm. I think that works out pretty well. Like you're so in love with the concept of the force of the mm. weave that, that, that it's really more of a philosophy. Yeah. Um, 
Someone else had something in chat that was uh, intriguing no. and can't remember what it was right now. I'm not sure. I, I don't have uh, chat open at the moment because of my, uh, well, we got one monitor, but um, I, I, there was a UA option, right? About, gosh, it was before pre Xanathar's mm -hmm. for a, uh, a Theurge uh, school for wizardry. Mm -hmm. There was, yeah. And I remember that one being. Like actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that's the one you got to substitute the domain features of a cleric for a wizard, and it allowed for some pretty interesting combinations, if I recall. Mm. Um, mm. Or maybe I'm mis I could be misremembering that, but it's been a while since it's been out. Um, I recall really liking it, thinking it was interesting, uh, and then sad. I never made it. Oh. We always have the PDFs. <laughs> Oh man, it's good driving nuts. I had a concept and it's gone. Um, your go to class for playing a plague doctor. Uh, there is a very good monk that just came out uh, on the way of mercy. Um, he's a very good plague doctor, but also alchemist. And maybe you can find a way to, that's very mad to do the combination of the two. Um, but I, I would go artificer alchemist for a plague doctor. Or I would go with that monk. I think those are two really stellar mm. choices. I think Artificer uh, uh, Alchemist is good. I'm uh, I like um, was a D and D podcast uh, Turncloaks. I think where someone played a cleric who was sort of reskinned as a plague doctor, and all of their spells were like, you know, heavy on the material component, like you know, take this or mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought it worked really well. There's an interesting question. How would you go about making a fighter who eventually wants to ascend to be a demigod or war um, of war and glory? You know, the, 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 the heroism paladin is very much kind of that, where um, the concept is that they aren't linked to the divine. And I typically don't play paladins that are. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of like forego the whole divinity thing. Um, but um, yeah, they are very much kind of that concept where they eventually kind of become divine because of their heroism mm -hmm. um, or their pure you know, un, 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 unadulterated ego. I don't know which, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they've somehow become divine. But like, I think that's a conversation with your DM. So yeah, uh, it, it does sort of raise the the thing that, that like one of the things that I was kind of sad to see didn't make it from fourth to fifth was the the different. Um, you know, I and mean, this is this shows how little of fourth I actually played. But like, you start off with like sort of a background, and then you get your paragon uh, path, and eventually your epic mm. destiny, right? And so, like that, those epic destinies would cover this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. This is where lichdom could come in, or, or, yeah. or demigodhood, or something. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really fun because a lot of times, by the time you get to those high levels, it's it's either more of the same, but just higher level enemies. Or it's like so complicated that your DM will eventually collapse under the the uh, the intricacy of a uh, a long running high powered uh, campaign. Mm. But like you could be, I don't know, you could uh, have something new, pick a new background, basically like picking a new background for yourself. But uh, instead of it's something that's already happened to you, it's something you aspire to, and then it mm -hmm. gives you goals to work towards that kind of thing. No, I have. That's how I do it. I have very weird concepts that uh, uh, I came, look, I basically turned uh, into the final plot point of our last Beyond Heroes game is a warlock that is actually tied, their patron is actually themselves. Mm. Um, I, I enjoy this concept because it's a bit reverse engineering from the uh, connection between Fist and Dentalus and Raceland, if you've ever read Dragonlance. Mm -hmm. I like very much like the idea, like if you become 20th level as a warlock, you, or higher, whatever you know, in your mind, and you become like demigod status or a lich, um, and you can be a patron. Why not be a patron to yourself? Why not? Why not have a closed loop timeline mm -hmm. where you are your own patron? Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Because uh, you get you're starting to mess with wish and uh, making and things happen. And time, you know, you were always yourself. Like, yeah, you know, it, it's always this the eternal now. Uh, once you've ascended to that level of uh, you know power, well, and who's to say that you like yourself twenty you know twenty oh, levels from now, right? Right. Yeah. So there, it doesn't really change the game, but like, so that's what it turned out to be for Avrin in, in the Beyond Heroes polling is that avrin has been his own warlike like the whole time, and Avrin doesn't even really exist in a, in a weird sense. Um, he has he is a perfect circle. Mm. Um, so he was never born, right? Yeah, so he's kind of like outside the system. He's almost like a li the living spell. 
yeah. um, in that sense. And I, I, I very much like character concepts that get really out there like that. So yeah, and like having something that that supports that. Because like, what's the background for a character like that? What do you? I mean, you mm. can always do a custom one, right? But it, it feels like that the if your if your DM's like, yes, we can do that, then it, it deserves to have something meaty. Like yeah, to, that's I true. Think, you know, so yeah, I I speaking of sort of like destinies and and, and like you know high class, you're not high class, but uh, high concept characters. I did the my character sort of destined to be a demigod by playing an Asimar zealot barbarian, mm. and like the combination of those two, the Asimar sort of like touched by the divine, and the zealot like you, you don't need that expensive diamond to bring me back just spin the spell like i'm i'm good to go mm. like i'm ready i'm i'm more than mortal in that sense 200 right. years fine just bring me back you know yeah, um, it's true i forget that i forget uh, that because yeah. i have a villain in uh, my campaign world that is a zealot barbarian and he basically propagates a ritualized form of true resurrection mm -hmm. throughout the land so it's like if anyone needs me if anyone needs a, a, a badass general to come whip the good guys, I'm here. Here's my calling card. Oh, by the way, it's a, it's a ritual to bring me back. And <laughs> so he dies all the time. There's plenty of like, oh yeah, everybody's killed this guy. Yeah. But he just keeps coming back because they can't wipe out the idea of it. And oh, as well that's as, lovely. There's so many. <clears throat> it's like, think of the book like Necronomicon. Why is it so hard to read? You would mm -hmm. think that it would be terribly easy to. Uh, you know, get access. And then I think of the Amber Temple and say Curse of Strahd where like mm -hmm. the secrets of Lichdom are just sitting there right. for anyone to come in and find. And I like the idea of someone who is just like, yeah, my my evil is really easy. I translated it into all languages and <laughs> you're, oh, I, that's I, fantastic. I, I, yeah, the I know. Yeah, you're, why, why aren't you handing out flyers? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um yeah. <laughs> so here's my final concept, and this is one I've always wanted to play that I have played. Uh, the Resurrectionist. Um, mm -hmm. This is actually a term from the uh, 19th, 1800s uh, about uh, people that would grave robbers, essentially. Yes. Re re they would sell bodies, actually. Um, the Resurrectionists, often mm -hmm. for for medical purposes and stuff like that. So, um, but the Resurrectionist is someone who is a divine soul sorcerer. But maybe they were near like an event, right? Like imagine Thor is attacking. Uh, German Gunder, and there's this big battle, and you were like within the blast radius of one of the explosions, and you now are suffused with divine energy. Where, whatever reason, or maybe you yeah. really are, are Neo, right? Like maybe you are the chosen one, and you just decide not to be chosen. Sure. But you have divine power, and you literally sell your services. So, like, you can do this whole thing where, like, okay, you provide the parts. <laughs> this is this big thing, my big sell. Mm -hmm. You provide the parts, and I'll provide the labor. <laughs> yes so you have to provide the diamond you have to provide the body and i will resurrect your friends and yeah. that's the resurrectionist that is a that is the holy man for hire yes. uh they're not they have no other agenda other than making profit for resurrecting the right people um it's deeply evil and disturbing <laughs> uh-huh like it, oh man the mercenary cleric i love it because it's like yeah. Oh, oh uh, you guys need some uh, soldiers? I'll raise them. I'll, I'll bring them back either alive or dead. What do you need? You know, yeah. I, I'm your guy. Yeah, I love he, that. He's very like utilitarian, not where you were like hoping for like, oh, the chosen one. You need to meet the chosen mm -hmm. one and then you meet the chosen <laughs> one. You're like, like it's just this dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this exactly. is the guy? I mean, nothing represents the world you're in that more than that, too. Like that takes that'll take the <laughs> the wind out of anyone's sails. Like, <laughs> just get her, get ready for this. Like, that's a that's a character that very much I feel like Blunt can like be in The Witcher, right? Or like, yeah. it's a very dystopian kind of viewpoint. Now. Easily, yeah. And it's such a fun character to play. Yes, I, and I, I like I, I want a world where all of these high high concept characters these chosen ones and and uh you know destined to be demigods and the like can just mm -hmm. romp around <laughs> and get into trouble i want to see that campaign world yeah i'm definitely gonna have to write a short story about uh, several short stories about all these character concepts that, mm -hmm. I, that, that i've come up with so far and i can't i don't want to steal yours yeah, um that's but, right. uh, oh we're out of time my god we, we, time. <laughs> we never have any trouble filling time never um no. I did not get to talk about the Gnome Conquest Paladin, but oh, I, was, wait, wait, I might, I might yeah, save yeah. that. Oh, okay. okay. I was just going to say, I think that a Gnome Conquest Paladin is easy to, they're the shortest of the short guys. 
right? No, and then you can mm -hmm. easily see a sort of militaristic kind of like there's people are going to take the gnomes seriously now, you know, mm -hmm. kind of attitude about it. Uh, gnomes in my games alternate from a lot of different ways currently the gnomes in my campaigns they know they're in a DD game they understand that they have that they don't exist outside of a session that's why they don't take anything seriously oh, and man. so they just they get they're in on the joke they get it they they I, I love characters and things that break the fourth wall and so i for me gnomes are that that they they know yeah they, it's they almost, laugh. and they'll they laugh that stone <laughs> that stone giant thing going on <laughs> yes yeah yeah they'll laugh when you get a one they, un they know what you're rolling. They know when you used abilities. Like, they just will. They'll comment on it. Okay. Uh, and so that's how I, I do it. And I could see, uh, you know, taking that to a dark place. Oh, and real quick, someone did ask me about what's the best lightning uh, character combination. I would go, um, I would go uh, uh, Barbarian Path of the, S uh, Barbarian Storm. What is that? Uh, Storm Herald. Storm Barbarian Storm Hel Herald for lightning. And then you are also dipping into Storm Soul Sorcerer. And then you've got lightning just spamming off of you. Um, you can kind of fly and hover. I mean, a flying barbarian is terrifying. So if you want to be Thor, Storm Soul, yeah. or, uh, Storm Soul Sorcerer, um, and then combine that with uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Storm Herald, Barbarian, and then you got like a really weird dude <laughs> with lightning powers. <laughs> Probably the weirdest dude out of everything we've said today, I would actually say. <laughs> so uh but totally illegal somehow <laughs> so sure uh that's the show everyone thank you for watching todd talks uh, uh thank you again to our constant guest uh jim davis of webdm go check out their patreon check out their their youtube channel as well they have great tutorial videos uh if you if you want to learn dnd very quickly and and think about other kind of things that you can do within your campaign or with your player characters, WebDM is an excellent, excellent source for all of that. So anything else? Oh, yes. I'm good. Yeah. I right. love Th this. Let's do Thank it. Thank you everyone for watching. <laughs> Thanks for participating. See you later. <laughs>